Windows 11, if you're using a PC, it's coming soon. Actually, I'll rephrase that. If you're using a PC capable of running Windows 11, it's coming soon, maybe. The rollout of Windows 11 will be taking place over the next few months from Microsoft to compatible machines. And in today's video, I take you through my recent testing of Zwift on machines that have been upgraded to Windows 11. I'll be covering the upgrade process to get Windows 11 because there are ways to fast track that if you don't wanna wait for the automated rollout. I've done some benchmarking on Zwift both prior to the upgrade with Windows 10 and after the upgrade to answer the question, is it faster, is it slower? Are there any red flags going to Windows 11? And along the way, there'll be some tips and tricks, including how to get that start menu back over to the left because old habits do die hard. When a major revision or update comes along, there's always general hesitation for people to jump in the deep end straight away. Why change something that works? Why fix something that's not broken? And I totally get that, but I also do like upgrades and I like to be across what's new. Last week, I upgraded my main Zwift machine, which I use for Zwifting, streaming, and capturing to Windows 11. This machine is a HP Omen gaming system with an Intel Core i7-9700 processor, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 GPU, 16 gig of RAM, solid state storage, so it's quite a new machine. The Windows 11 upgrade was performed using the Windows 11 Installation Assistant. The Installation Assistant will do some pre-checks on the system and tell you if there's any incompatibilities with your hardware going from Windows 10 to Windows 11. That machine upgraded to Windows 11 without any problems whatsoever, but that's expected. It's a relatively new PC. I thought a better test of Zwift performance and Windows 11 upgrades would be on my previous Zwifting machine. And that's a 2016 Alienware Alpha R2. The hardware specifications of that it's an Intel Core i7-6700T processor, 2.8 gigahertz, 16 gig of RAM, and it has an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960 graphics card. Prior to upgrading that older PC to Windows 11 and doing my benchmarking, I updated all the drivers, I got the operating system on the latest patch levels, and I performed a Zwift benchmark around the jungle loop. This involved running Zwift in full screen, V-Sync was turned off, so the frame rates were not limited, it was using Zwift in ultra mode graphics profile at 1080 screen resolution. The testing was done solo in offline mode, so not to be influenced by any other riders on course. Using an Ant Plus simulator, I set my rider power to 350 watts steady state, so I was traveling at the same speed for each test. I then saved the log file for review and comparison once I complete this exact same test with this Alienware Alpha R2 once it's upgraded to Windows 11. The process of upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11 on the Alienware Alpha wasn't quite smooth sailing. The i7 CPU was listed as not supported and the installation assistant refused to proceed. However, there are a few workarounds. Uh, one involving a registry addition and installing the Windows 11 update from the Windows 11 installation ISO. Now I won't be covering the full details of how to install Windows 11 on a machine that is technically incompatible, but I will put links in the video description below if you want to go down that path yourself, as I have done here. Anyhow, a few hours later, Windows 11 was installed. And the first thing I had to do was switch that Windows Start button over to the left. This is done by right-clicking on the taskbar, taskbar settings, scrolling to taskbar behavior, and setting the taskbar alignment to the left. Once that was done, it was back to the jungle for my second test. Using the same offline mode, V-Sync disabled, same rider power set, same graphics profile. The only change being the operating system is now Windows 11. With the second jungle loop benchmark complete under Windows 11, it's over to another one of my favorite websites on the internet, Zwiftalyzer.com, which will analyze Zwift log files and pull up pretty graphs like this. What we have on screen, is the Windows 10 statistics from that first ride. The most important number to look at there is the average frames per second, and that was 61 on Windows 10. Pulling up Windows 11, and not much changes there. Average frame rate, 61 frames per second, and I can confirm the visual experience of watching that rider go around was no different whatsoever. I couldn't detect any difference, and the logs also confirm that. So no change to Zwift, even on an Alienware system that's technically not supported by Windows 11. So I was happy with those results. To be honest, those results really weren't unexpected. Having used Windows 11 for the last week on my main HP machine to do Zwifting, streaming, recording, and everything else I needed to do under Windows, and that was working fine. 
As a bonus round in the Llama Lab, I ran the exact same jungle loop test on the HP Omen machine. Here are the results using Zwiftalyzer for the exact same test. This was in 4K UHD resolution, so a lot higher resolution on a much more powerful machine than those little Alienware alphas. Average frame rate there is 88, and everything else ran buttery smooth under Windows 11 for that machine. So I suspect if you have a PC that the installation assistant passes all checks and tells you that you can go from Windows 10 to Windows 11, you're unlikely to have any problems doing this upgrade. However, with a video like this, I do need to put disclaimers, notes, and warnings, and there's quite a few of these. First of all, I'm not advocating everybody go out and upgrade to Windows 11. If Windows 10 is working fine and you are happy, you're good to go through till October 2025, where Microsoft will then sunset this and end support for that operating system. The goal of this video was to discuss my experience with the upgrade on two systems that I use for Zwift. There were no red flags that I encountered, even with that registry hack to install Windows 11 on a technically unsupported system. It all worked fine. The two systems that I successfully upgraded to Windows 11 on were Intel CPUs and Nvidia GPUs. I stick with those brands as they typically give the best compatibility for Zwift. There are two main issues people are coming up against going from Windows 10 to Windows 11. The first one being the trusted platform module 2.0 requirement, and the second one which you saw in this video is having an incompatible CPU. As shown in this video, there is a workaround for those. It's a little bit out of scope on what I want to cover today, but links below in the video description. If you're using an AMD-based system, your mileage may vary based on reports that I've read this week. Those issues may have been resolved already, if not soon. And my last note on my list here is be sure to upgrade your other software too, if it doesn't do it automatically. Be that Chrome, VLC, OBS, your NVIDIA drivers. Check your hardware vendor's website to see if they have any extra drivers for Windows 11, and you should be good. Okay, and with that, that's a wrap. Hopefully you've found this informative. If you have, give it a thumbs up. And to support this channel, hit that subscribe button. Or to take that support a little further, hit that membership button. It's much appreciated. We'll see you soon. Before I let you go, and as I'm sitting here editing this video with no green screen, I thought I'd add a few footnotes to answer a few more questions about Windows 10 to Windows 11. I didn't discuss anything about pairing peripherals via Bluetooth to Windows using Zwift because the experience was exactly the same. If it was going to work, it worked fine. If it didn't work, I needed to quit Zwift, start again, check for controllable trainer, and voila, it would pop up. So just like the frame rates, that experience was same, same. Fingers crossed Zwift are working behind the scenes on just uh, making that Bluetooth pairing process a little bit more robust. Another thing of note was the benchmarking done with the HP Omen was done whilst capturing that lap. So I think it was 86 or 88 frames a second on average in 4K Ultra HD. And that was possibly impacted a little bit by me capturing that footage so I could show you the little guy riding around the jungle for that test. Another great resource for all things Zwifting on a PC is the Zwift PC Master Race group over on Facebook. I'll put a link to that in the video description below. And finally, it's not lost on me that I've done this entire video sitting in front of a Mac. Everything I do is on a Mac, except gaming. These things for gaming, not my cup of tea. All right, thanks for watching.